Good morning, guys. We're back here in the same spot that uh, we were just at a few hours ago, actually. Jake and I put those stands in there last night, right at dark, trying to move back into that bedding area on these bucks. And it's about four o'clock right now. We've got a good, I don't know, probably hour hike to get back in there to those stands, super, super quiet. We've got to go right along the edge of that bean field for the last 50, 60 yards. And I'm assuming that's where those bucks are at right now. So we can see the edge of the beans from where the stands are, but the bucks got to come into the timber, just into the very edge for us to kill them on public. And we're set up right on the same trail that they exited out of their bedding area last night. So hopefully they'll use the same one on their way back in. I guess Ted's just gonna nap in the boat here for a little bit, huh? Yeah, I'll be waiting to haul one out. It's hard dragging one out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But we- Stay away from those cotton mouths. Yeah, we better get moving in there. We'll see you guys in the tree. And about a hundred more yards of just steady walking, then we're gonna get real quiet. It's about 5.30. We got another 15 minutes or so before legal shooting time. And Jake and I are in these stands. We crept in so quiet this last 40, 50 yards and we never boogered anything. We never heard anything take off anyway. Only sitting about two feet off the ground right here in this tree. And as it gets light, I would assume we're gonna be able to see deer out in the beans here. The property line is not very far that way. You know, we only have about 15 yards to work with that direction to the edge of the field. So they have to come in here to the edge of the grass in order for us to get a shot. They come down here, this little lane right here to the left of me, and go down there to get a drink. We can also kill them there. And if those bucks use the same trail this morning, we'll be in good shape. I just lost track of those bucks. They went in there to the right. I can't see them anymore. But the last one was just feeding there at about 80 to 100 yards. And I think they're in that little buffer strip right now that butts up against the edge of the field. That's right where they walked by Jake and I last night. those bucks go in down there in bed. We know that they're only 150 yards or so from us right now. We're gonna have to be real careful getting out of here. I've been looking at Onyx trying to figure out who owns that property and I may try to get permission to shoot across onto their side. Because what I'm afraid of in this spot is we're gonna have a buck come by us here 30 yards right to the edge of these beans and we're not gonna be able to shoot him because we don't have permission to shoot over there. So I may call and see if we can. So we're gonna go ahead and climb down, head to town, work on videos for a little bit, and then we'll be right back over here this afternoon. All right, it's mid-afternoon and me and Ted just got back out here, we just parked the boat. We're getting ready to head in. We've got some wind cover right now, so we're gonna move real quick, try to get back there and pick a tree out for the evening hunt. Watch out for snakes, Ted. We had some new developments earlier. I was looking at Onyx and I figured out who owned that land, that private land to the south, those beans where these bucks had been frequenting and uh, called a friend of mine that lives 
here close by and, and I guess it was just a stroke of luck, but he happened to know the people that own that land. So he called them for me and they're gonna allow us to shoot onto their property. It's real nice of them. I wish I'd have asked yesterday because I could have shot any one of those bucks. They were all inside of 30 yards. That just means tonight we can set up a little more aggressively knowing now that we can shoot the edge of the field. So we're gonna get moving and we will see you up there in the beans in just a few minutes. All right, we're about into the last 100 yards here. Stop for a second, and then we're gonna take our sweet time getting back in there. It's really thick, but this morning we were able to get in there without making any sound, just by taking our time. It's amazing how much a bedded buck will let you get away with. As long as you ain't making sound and you have a little bit of wind cover like we do today, you can slip right up on them. And I think those bucks that we saw this morning are bedded over here in these woods within 100 yards or so right now. Well, we finally got the stand hung, and we didn't make much of a move. Jake and I were sitting about 20 yards away, maybe not even that far, this morning. And we were only about three feet off the ground. This evening, Ted and I are probably 25, 30 feet up in this tree. The reason why I got up so high was the wind is finicky right here. This is bedding behind us. I kept dropping milkweed. Once I got up to like 12 feet, I dropped milkweed and it would suck back in there where our, our scent would be hitting the trails that are coming out of the bedding and into the field. So I just kept going higher and higher. And now that I'm up here, I'm dropping it and it's going clear out in the marsh. Now granted, Jake and I watched those two bucks go in down there by that black drain tile pipe or whatever it is. They went into the north and they're likely bedded up in there. But we kept hearing stuff back in here all morning. So I'm sure there's more deer bedded in there. After looking at the footage, it looks like there's at least four, five different bucks in here that we chewed, that we saw the last two sits. And you can tell that these beans are browsed down heavily here in this corner. The shaded side of these fields is where the deer are at. Now that we got permission to shoot on this side of the boundary, I'm pretty excited about this evening's sit. I can't imagine we're not gonna see deer. That little marsh is right here to the north and there's a runway that you'll see when Ted pans across it that leads out of the field, goes straight down to that marsh. That's what those bucks did last night. They went down there, got a drink, and then came back up onto the beans. And hopefully at least one of those bucks does something similar to what they did last night. If they do, we'll have a 20 yard shot right here in front of the stand. down the track. 
left. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. There he goes. He's dead, buddy. <laughs> How about that, Ted? <laughs> we got a Kentucky Velvet down. tour right there. <laughs> Look at those other ones out there. They don't even know what's going on. He fell right over there, dude. He, he couldn't Did you him. get him falling? Yeah. I was a nervous wreck, man. And finally, finally he started turning a little bit and I waited. He kind of put his head behind some golden rod or whatever that stuff is. That was the best way that could have happened. We would have shot him last night but we couldn't get permission, so I had to look at Onyx today, find out who owned this, and see, we're on public land right now. But we needed permission to shoot into the private. We just got it, and we just got a buck. Yes, we're giving him a boat ride. <laughs> yes, I gotta call Jake, he's gonna, Jake is gonna flip his lid. He's at Dairy Queen, or he's at, Wend Wendy's. He's at Wendy's right now, working on a video for you guys. Good. <laughs> We're gonna need you to uh, head down here to the <laughs> boat ramp. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, he's dead in front of us. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll be out of the way. Bring some water. That's it. Uh, uh, yeah, lots of water. Yeah, bring lots of water. <laughs> Don't tell me anything more. I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> okay, we'll see you, man. Go get him. He was standing right in here somewhere, I thought. And the arrow blew right through him. Here it is. Look at there. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He didn't know what hit him. He was done in a matter of seconds. That's about 21 yards to the tree. Look at the blood. Dump. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> there he is, buddy. Holy cow. Are you kidding me? Velvet buck right there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I always <laughs> dreamed of hunting him now. And he's, he's all fuzzy, not broken off at all. Like, he's starting to shed it a little bit on that tail. I'm gonna get him tagged and then we'll move him so we can get a little better look at him for you guys. We also gotta go grab Jake and get him gutted. In this hot weather, we don't have very much time. We've gotta get him out of the woods as soon as possible. So, beautiful deer. That is cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Here he lays. <laughs> <Here's Vinny. laughs> nice. Smoke. 
<laughs> he couldn't be more perfect for what we wanted. Oh here. man, that's <laughs> ideal. Like that's that's exactly what our what our goals were when we came down here. Mm -hmm. Was to try to shoot a nice two year old velvet buck. What do you think about that, Scott? Man, it's a great deer. I'm happy for y'all. So <laughs> thanks, man. A couple days of hard work pays off real quick. So first velvet buck. One big thing that worked for us in this particular instance was that we observed these deer last night. We came in, kind of into the wind, we got in, in a spot where we could see at least a little bit, mm -hmm. and we could tell that the beans were browsed in the field, and we observed them. And then we had to make a game plan from there. In a lot of cases, people are thinking observation sit, that's like half a mile or 400 yards. In this case, these bucks last night were 25 yards. Mm -hmm. but because they never came in the timber where we left all that ground scent, we weren't too worried about the pressure, right. you know. Well, in an observation set this time of year, you don't feel like you're wasting a hunt as much as, say, maybe November or late October because these deer have probably been doing the same thing like we said last night for the last two months. I mean, we knew if we observed something that, at least within the next three to four days, that they were probably going to be coming out on the field and doing the same thing again. I think one big key, too, a, a lot of folks are hunting these, these big bottom ag fields like this uh, all over the Midwest, really, where you've just got hundreds of acres of soybeans or corn, and there's not deer on every acre of that in a given evening. They pick certain spots of the field to feed in. Those pockets, that's what you're looking for. Yeah, and, and that's what you get from an observation sit. You get to see which areas of the field they're using. And in some cases, like we saw earlier this week, the deer are bedding in the beans. Right. You know, once the beans get a certain height, they start to feel more comfortable out there during the day. These beans are so browsed down in this back corner of the field that uh, they're still bedding out in the timber and then working their way out like you traditionally would see them. But they're not far off the field. They're right on the edge. No, the they're right on the edge. Bedding is right on the edge of the food right now. You know, what, what people don't realize now in today's agriculture production is when we were younger, we would walk through soybean fields and when they were fully mature, they'd be at our waist. And mm -hmm. now you walk through bean fields and if you're six foot tall, they're up to your chin, you know? <laughs> and uh, there's a security factor there in the deer too. When, when the beans are above their eye level and all they can do is just see what's out in front of them, you know, by inches, I think they like staying back, not, you know, just not in the natural areas where they would be with the shadows and the shade and the right. cooler temperatures, but where that browse is at, it just gives them that security factor of being able to see, and you've well, got to capitalize on they that. They definitely moved through the field faster this morning where the beans were taller, and when, once they got where the beans right. were shorter, they, they slowed down. They spent a bunch of time over here, and I think a big reason why is because there's this big strip with all this natural browse and right. stuff that's right next to the beans. Right. If you watch those deer, in tonight's video of all these bucks coming in, half of them are in the beans and half of them are in here eating what it, whatever this stuff is. Yeah, well, this is Johnson grass here, but you got ragweed out here and you've got some mare's tail. And, you know, it's, it's the first part of September, but all through the summer, you know, you're... They're just, browsing. Yeah, they're that. browsing. And, and the later it gets, something else becomes more palatable. And, and when they, they nip some of this stuff, it just comes back and it's just fresh shoot, you know, and it's mm -hmm. more, it's tender and the palatability on this stuff is great. And it's just another transition. You've got the beans, you've got the, the browse, the weeds or grasses or broadleaves, whatever you want to look at. You know, with so many crops now being GMO and Roundup ready, yep. you know, these fields are sprayed once or twice a year. There'll be tracks that'll be up and down the fields and those deer, they'll cut Wait. those fields exactly where those tracks are. This I mean, buck and the other one walk right yeah. down the tracks. Yeah. Because right if, ass, if, if, if me or you go out there and walk in that bean field, our feet will get bound up. It's like it's a wiry mess, mm -hmm. you know. And and if you had to they cut know across how to that get field, it. that's it. Yep. I mean, their feet are clear, and 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 that vegetation has been more or less killed due to the pressure of the tires, and they've got that visual. I was glad you seen a lot of deer this evening, but uh, I respect you know you taking the first opportunity that you had on a on a velvet deer, and and you're doing it on public property. And what a lot of people don't realize is you've got 44,000 plus acres to hunt on and you're trying to figure out where can you narrow it down to that 20 yard shot and you did it. I'll be honest with you though man like my confidence was completely shot a couple of days ago <laughs> like these guys are like quit being a baby you know <laughs> we gotta we gotta keep going I'm like oh it's too warm we're never gonna kill anything there's nobody killing deer and then you look at Facebook and there's velvet bucks you know right. hitting the ground in Kentucky and like yeah. well somebody's killing them and then we talked to Jason you know, who's hunting up the road, he got him a nice velvet buck right. on public land. 
And then we met up with Jordan there, down there, and he's seeing bucks, and we're like, okay, wait a minute. Maybe we're not doing things right, right. And so you're, far. And you're not killing them over a 200-pound corn pile, and, and uh, no, you're you not killing get them over out, mineral. Yeah. I mean, you're killing them on, there's no baiting, there's there's no mineral, uh, you know, on, on public lands. And, and so you're hunting vegetation. I mean, that's that's your food, and, and water has been everywhere you've seen around here. It's not the amount of water uh, that you got to look at. You got to look at that water that's really close to the those location food of the water. Yeah. In and this so, case, the bedding, the water, and the food is all within 80 yards of each other in that yeah. corner. Yeah. Like where we shot this buck is where all that comes together in that spot. That's where they were bedded yesterday. Today they weren't bedded there, but they were headed there. That's a velvet buck, though, yeah. right there, boys. That's right. And I am. So. I couldn't be more tickled with it. I'm happy for you. So. Welcome to Kentucky, Aaron. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be back, no doubt about it. Thanks, guys, for being part of this. I couldn't have done it without you. Time we had some blood in this boat. Clean that cart and boat case. Sit with your deer, man. Coming in hot. 